Hi, my name is Matt Turner. I'm the lead writer on Assassin's Creed 3, and you are watching Platform 32. Assassin's Creed 3 has just been announced, and Platform 32 were invited along to an exclusive press event in London to check out the first gameplay footage from the newest game in Ubisoft's Assassin's vs Templars franchise. While we were there, we cornered Matt Turner, the lead scriptwriter on the game, who was kind enough to answer some questions for us. So Matt, as if we didn't already know, what is Assassin's Creed 3? Assassin's Creed 3 is uh, the next big thing coming out of Ubisoft, and it's uh, it's the we, we've taken painstaking efforts to uh, push it to the next level on all fronts. It's really everything is fresh, everything's new, and we've really wanted to make uh, the best quality game that we've ever made as a, as a, as a, as a franchise. And I think we've. We're, we're really close and we're really in a position to actually accomplish that. So it looks like the time period has changed once again. Where are our assassin missions going to take place in AC3? So we're, we're in the American Revolution. Uh, the setting actually spans from 1753 to 1783, so it's like a 30 year chunk uh, of colonial life. It's not just a revolution, it's before, uh, during, and a little bit after. So you're really getting a, a taste of what it was like to live in that place in that time. Uh, we. The, the, the decision to go with uh, the American Revolution wasn't just a random one. We didn't stick a bunch of places in a hat and go, meh, American Revolution. Uh, no, we really feel that it's the best place for the, the for Assassin's Creed as a, as, a, as a narrative over a bunch of different projects. This is That was the best place for it to, to, to go to because it, it uh, was happening in that history. It's happening in our Assassins versus Templar uh, narrative. They, they reflect almost perfectly. So, and from story from a story perspective, we got to have all these great kind of reflections and, and bounces back and forth. And it was for us, it was like a huge, huge opportunity to tell a really interesting story. Uh, and then on top of that, um, as far as gameplay goes, we we were really pushing to to, to have a brand new assassin who uh, moved differently, who was, had different abilities, could could be. Uh, a different type of assassin, and that to us, uh, the organic environments was the natural step. So the frontier of the, of the American Revolution of the, of the colonies was was kind of a no-brainer, and it allowed us to, to achieve that in, in creating a new assassin with a whole new feel. So obviously, you've had to do away with Ezio for this sequel. Can you give us the lowdown on Connor, the new historical hitman in AC3? Yeah, he's uh, he's half uh, Mohawk and, and half British. Uh, he grows up uh, in a Mohawk community in the Mohawk Valley, which is a kind of like north. Western New York and beyond a little bit. It's a big area, and um, yeah, he's a he's a very different person to previous previous assassins, and uh, he suffers some pretty uh, deep traumas as a, as a young boy, which you'll experience in the story, and then from that he's kind of pushed to. Uh, to kind of right the wrongs of the colonies and try and try and make sure that what happened to him doesn't happen to anybody else. Uh, so he's not driven by um, setting the colonies free or you know putting down the rebels. That's not his. He's coming from a different place, and uh, that to us was really important. That his story was personal and that he had different motivations outside of this kind of uh, revolutionary conflict, and he had a different perspective on what was happening there. Um, so yeah, he's he's driven by uh, by a sense of justice and uh, about doing the right thing and. Uh, where that takes him in the story, I think is going to be pretty interesting. Nice! And will we be seeing Desmond slipping back into the Animus this time around? We're still with Desmond, It's in, I, I can say that we're going to see more of Desmond than we ever have before, uh, and the other Assassin's Creed uh, entries. Uh, I can't go any deeper than that, but just rest assured we're going to spend a lot more time with the present than we ever had before, so I think we're going to have some good, good steps forward there. Awesome. Now, um, after the release of the announcement trailer, a lot of fans uh, of my show were worried that um, the tomahawk had replaced the hidden blade, and now we've seen the hidden <laughs> well, blade in the yeah, game. Yeah, but like he's got. I mean, even the, uh, when the, we had our launch trailer, people mm. were saying that in the boards, yeah. and I was like, "But he's got the blazer yeah. on." <laughs> so, so could you just reassure? <laughs> yeah, well, he, he's an assassin. He's got hidden blades. He needs to have hidden blades. Those are like those are like you can't be an assassin if you don't have them. So they're definitely a definitely player. there. And like, if you please rewatch the launch trailer and when he stands on top of the cliff you on his left hand you see the, the blazer there leaves us only the choice of brave resistance or the most abject submission in the gameplay footage, we were shown that Connor can now dual wield weapons, a new step for the franchise. Could you let us know how this will affect combat? That, that also goes deeper into wanting Connor to be completely new as a new assassin that players had to feel different. And that was in everything. That's the way he negotiated like climbing, how he was in the 
great, great how he fights, and that came into dual wielding. So like that was that's a, a new thing for him. And not only is it a, a new uh, way of fighting, and it gives the player n new ways of combos and stuff like that. And then you'll see that in, in different demos and stuff. But it also is part of Connor's uh, personality. That's how he that's how he fights, and it's part of his his flavor of combat, which is a little more brutal, a little more earthy. Like he's he'll he'll do some damage <laughs> and like it's i think it's fun it's really satisfying when you're playing with him uh, how he moves in, in combat desmond's ancestors have been used to parkouring around cities but in assassin's creed 3 connor must navigate a huge open landscape called the frontier can you tell us about this new playground for us when we were building the, the, the frontier was the first thing one of the one of the first things that we built like two years ago or a little more than that now to prove out that we could do it and for us the most important thing was that it was a full 3D playable space. So all the designing of it, all the building of it had to be around that. that it had to be as appealing as a playground as the cities were, like Rome and Venice and stuff. So that we were set out to build that and we did. And as, we, as it was happening, like, oh man, this is cool. Like, you can run into the trees, you can climb cliffs, you can do all this crazy stuff. And it started to feel really, really uh, new. But at the same time, it has that assassin's like, oh yeah, but he's doing, he's parkouring, but it's just in trees. Uh, and the map is huge. It's, it's 1.5 times the size of Rome, just, just the frontier. Mm -hmm. So if you think about what, if you logically, like we've got Boston and New York and obviously some stuff in the present. That's a lot of game. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, but uh, but the frontier itself, it's got 30% of our missions are in there. There's quests. There's hunting. Uh, there's other side missions. There's all kinds of stuff. And it's not just trees and forests, right? There's like there's towns. There's like Lexington and Concord, other little villages. Like so there's all kinds of stuff happening in in the frontier. And uh, I think that once the player, once players realize what Connor is capable of in that environment and what there is to do, they're going to be really pumped to get in there and, and, and explore it. Cool. So you could literally just spend. Uh, a large percentage of your game time parkouring across trees. Oh, finding yeah, but like, like, like you could parkour across Rome, but you can do that in the frontier, through the trees and up cliffs and all over, that kind of stuff. And then in doing that, there's, like I said, there's all kinds of content for the player to explore. So the, the, the frontier was built and f is full of just stuff to do for the player. And it's, I, when, we're, when, when we're in there playing around now, it's like, yeah, it's, it's a whole new feeling, right? And that was really important for us. I was going back to making a new assassin. That is something completely fresh the Assassin's Creed franchise, and uh, I th but it still maintains the, the core pillars of the game, which are uh, social, stealth, navigation, and combat, right? But this is navigation in a new place, and I think that's really exciting. Cool. Well, and you're talking about like uh, making the free running feel fresh. Uh, you guys have done that in the cities as well by um, giving the opportunity to move through buildings. And yeah, well, we've but that was, it's, it's funny. So we built the frontier. We had all these experiments and stuff. It's kind of like a little lab that we used, and the stuff that came out of that. It, it kind of also went into the cities. So the cities have become even more uh, richly dense with, with things to do. And yeah, you, you saw in the demo that there's a, there's a, you can go through different windows and kind of break chases and stuff. And this, the cities have become even more interactive and more playgrounds than they used to be. So I think that the, the, the work that we put into the frontier has kind of has, has permeated throughout the entire game and really brought a lot of new stuff to the, to the Assassin's Creed world. I think players are going to be really excited about. Another big feature that was shown off in the gameplay video was the weather in AC3. Almost like a character in itself, the changing weather affects the gameplay drastically and these conditions can either hamper Connor's progress or he can try to use them to his advantage. Can you explain more about the weather for our viewers? Yes, yeah, so, I mean the, the biggest weather impact is snow. Uh, so when we were setting out to build snow, the snow was just really core to the fantasy of the frontier, like colonial America, it was like winter was just like... It's a big deal. Like <laughs> people, when winter was coming, you know, not to quote uh, Game of Thrones or anything, but the winter is coming. It was like it was like that. Like it was this major thing that was coming in people's lives, and they always had to deal with it every year. People die. More people die in the revolution of cold than of combat. Right? If you think about that on the scale, that's huge, and that was just common throughout their lives there. So we wanted that to kind of translate to the player, and that came uh, through snow, and not just being a, a texture over the ground, but it's it has gameplay implications to the core. Right? So. You saw in the demo when it's deep, he has to wade through it. He's a little slower, so that encourages the player to go up into the trees. So, it, like, you know, it, it promotes the, the tree running and parkour. It leaves tracks, and you saw Connor leaving his tracks. So that also obviously goes to the NPCs and the animals, so you can track them using that. You have blood trails and stuff. So this, this, the snow is this thing that changes the way that you interact with the environment, and I think that's really, uh, really, really fresh for us, and it's really cool for the game for the player to, to think of like environments. Same environment being different with this little modifier, right? But that ends up being a pretty big modifier. And then we have other weather on top of that, like we have fog, we have rain, and these things are like more a little more ambient. 
that kind of change the flavor of a, of a place, you know, when you have, or you, obviously fog will, will affect your visibility and stuff like that, but for the most part, it'll kind of give you a new uh, sense of, 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 a, of a different area when you, when you come into it. During the gameplay demo, we were also told that rain will stop people from being able to use their muskets. A small thing, but with great implications for planning attacks on your enemies. Also in the demo, we saw a black bear attack Connor, who killed it with a swift jab of his hidden blade. Will random animal encounters happen a lot in the game? So the the, the animals are like the are like the crowd of the frontier, as we as we aimed set out to do. Uh, so they really populate the whole place, and they have they, they go about their lives. So they have they have something to do outside of Connor being there. So it'll be more about those those paths inter intersecting, right? So the, the, the bears and like the the bear wasn't attacking. Connor, because he was, was like, I want to kill a human. Connor was in his way, right? Connor was on, on top of his kill. So like, if you think about that in terms of the rest of the animals, they all have their lives, and when Connor intersects with those, Connor, those animals' lives, then there will be interactions, but otherwise they just go on living, living their life. Okay, never get in between a hungry bear and his food. Lesson learnt. Another little update to the gameplay was the introduction of moving leaps of faith. In one section, we saw Connor jump from a branch into a bale of hay on the back of a moving cart. Tell us more, Matt. Just like hundreds, if not, I don't want to say thousands, but there's a lot of like little things that are just, you know, little iterations that are just a bump up. One of them is the haste, moving haystack on the back of the, of the cart, uh, which was which is a really neat little thing to do. Uh, we also, it just, that's a kind of core to the Assassin's Creed fantasy is the leap of faith, you know, like to jump off the high building is something that I think players enjoy and that like they just kind of expect it almost. Mm -hmm. So we want to keep that that feeling but also kind of uh, redefine it for Connor himself in the way in the way that he does it and and what he does what he does it into, right? So that kind of just changes the flavor a little bit. But you know, like the hidden blades or like the white hood, it's part of being an assassin. Yeah, true. And we also saw him perform a leap of faith into a big pile of snow, which was nice. Didn't see him build a snow man though. Got it. Assassin's Creed games are known for bringing to life historical figures, like Leonardo da Vinci for instance. Will we be running into more famous faces from the history books in AC3? We have a ton of them. 80% uh, of our other characters are historical, which is a bigger number than we've ever had before, which is huge. Uh, and which is interesting about that period is, is there's so many interesting people. And for us, the challenging part was figuring out which ones we're going to meet as opposed to uh, when we're going to meet them. So one of our approaches was to kind of write our assassins versus Templar story and see what historical characters could intersect with that story instead of like bending a narrative to make some guy be there that maybe wasn't around at that time. We wanted to feel it really natural uh, all the way through. Um, so yeah, we're going to meet guys like George Washington, uh, Benjamin Franklin. These guys, like everyone knows who they are, right? Like, you know, Benjamin Franklin is kite and is key. You know, George Washington, the commander in chief of the Continental Army. Like these people are, are household names and they're on American money. <laughs> so everyone knows what they look like, but no one knows who they were, right? You don't know who they were as, as real people. And, and we really want to bring that to a younger audience and explore these guys as human beings, like with, with flaws. And, and they make mistakes and they're, and they're stressed out. And they're this regular guys in this extraordinary situation is, is, is to be perfectly honest what they were. And to really show that, have that come across the player, you know, like people like Washington, they doubted themselves all the time. Like you, you put yourself in his shoes. You're not gonna be like, I'm gonna win this thing. Like the whole the whole time, he was freaking out, man. He was, <laughs> his boys were going down, and he probably was gonna go down too. And 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 to explore that and show these people as as human beings able to overcome extraordinary circumstances, and that to me is a really really interesting story. And that kind of uh, insight onto those people's lives, I think, is something that people generally don't have. And I think younger audiences are gonna be really interested to get involved in that. And outside of those famous guys, you get guys like Charles Lee, right? Who most people don't even know. But he was actually uh, considered by the Continental Congress to be the guy, to be the commander in chief. He was better suited, he had better credentials, uh, more experience, he was better in tactics, but he had owned property back in England and he said, if I come over, I want my property to be, uh, I want to be compensated for it. And they said, sorry, this guy over here is going to do it for free. So they went to Washington, who had not Vernon. So you're like, this guy was an amazing person and he was a really quirky guy. He had a bad temper and he had a big, he had loved dogs. He had dogs following him around and stuff. And like he was just really 
interesting guy, and we're going to be able to uh, you know meet them and 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 show and bring those people uh, into the conversation, which I think is really fun from a writing perspective. Cool, can't wait to meet them all. So there you have it, viewers. Lots to look forward to in Desmond's next adventure, including things that Matt didn't get to tell us about, like the revamped climbing system with new animations for climbing up rocks, which will no catch using real rock climbers. Connor can now swing from branches and slide under obstacles and glide through the frontier environment with just as much ease as his ancestors could in cities. There are improved facial animations and cloth effects which give incredibly detailed cutscenes. In the frontier you get rewards on how you kill the animals, shooting them ruins the pelts and meat, you get better pelts if you stealthily use knife or bow kills, Connor now has a bow, musket, throwing knife and tomahawks, plus dual pistols, and a weapon called a rope dart which is a real weapon from Chinese history that Connor can use to pull enemies towards him for combos or hoist them up and hang them from trees for stealthy snatch kills. Finally, in the last piece of footage we saw, Connor navigated his way through a huge battle on Bunker Hill towards an assassination target. The game is able to show upwards of 2,000 people on screen, so you can see huge battles being waged when you view them from afar. As you mission through the chaos, you see soldiers getting blown up by cannonballs, and Connor had to pause behind rocks in between musket barrages, which demonstrated the new cover system which Connor can now use for cover to kill movements. Then finally, he used foliage to hide. He automatically goes into stealth mode when he goes inside bushes and trees so it's easy to stalk your prey and plan a big attack. AC3 is looking to be big, a massive blockbuster which once again polishes the already loved gameplay elements of the previous games and adds a whole host of new features. AC3 will be out at the end of October and I can't wait.